straight ahead on CCX News, the possibility of turning Highway 252 into a freeway. It's been a hot topic for years, now it's slowly gaining momentum. Plus, a package delivery alert, some steps to take to avoid a theft at your door. And later, a pie sale where the pies are so good, they're sold before they are even made. CCX News starts right now. Hello and thanks for joining us. Highway 252 is up for discussion again. It's a highway that could see some changes. Eric Nelson joins us now with more on a plan that's starting to come together. Yeah, Alex and Mike, State Highway 252 is only 4.3 miles long, but it is a critical link between I-94, 694, and Highway 610. Removing stoplights and converting 252 into a freeway has been a hot-button topic for years. Now that idea is slowly gaining momentum. There are studies that show that it would be worth the, the uh, investment. Um, so... Um, it, uh, so that's why it's being pursued, and uh, whether that funding comes around or not, that's yet to be seen. The volume of traffic on 252 is extremely high. 67,000 vehicles use the road daily as many drivers commute between the northern suburbs and downtown Minneapolis. They are often delayed by stoplights, which is why some want a freeway. If 252 does become an expressway, there will also be min-pass lanes on the route. The potential 252 project is just in the exploratory phase and construction could be years away. But experts believe it will be cost-effective if it happens. MnDOT is working with its partners, uh, Hennepin County, Met Council, uh, Brooklyn Center, Brooklyn Park, looking to uh, there's some efforts to identify whether there's uh, money available to, uh, for freeway conversion. Now, the various agencies that have applied for state funding for the 252 conversion should get an answer in late March. Alex and Mike. All right, thanks. Brooklyn Center Police are encouraging homeowners to do something different when it comes to holiday package deliveries. The warning comes after five packages were stolen in the past two weeks. And it happens quick. It only takes a couple seconds. They go up to the doorstep, grab the package, and then, and then they're gone. This is video from last year, and as you can see, it only took the thief four seconds to take what didn't belong to her. Most of the incidents happen between November and December, and the crimes are not occurring in any one section of the city. Brooklyn Center Police say last year was particularly bad, and they don't want to repeat history. Last year in 2016, we had approximately 15 types of package thefts. Uh, going into October of 2016, we only had one or two. So what we saw was a significant spike uh, during the latter half of the year, during the holiday season. Brooklyn Center Police have a few suggestions to prevent packages from being stolen. If you're ordering from Amazon, have your packages delivered to an Amazon secured locker. If you're ordering from FedEx, they do have a partnership with Walgreens. You can have your boxes delivered there or have items delivered to a store or your workplace. Brooklyn Center Police are analyzing data to see where most of the thefts are occurring and will add more patrols to possible trouble spots. The Osceola School District is moving ahead with its superintendent search after the school board unanimously recommended hiring a search firm based out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Current superintendent Kate McGuire is retiring at the end of the school year. Now, the search firm Ray & Associates is the same one used by Lakeville and St. Paul schools for their recent superintendent searches. The search firm did draw the ire of St. Paul school board members after the company failed to disclose a superintendent finalist bankruptcy filing. The error was blamed on miscommunication. An Osseo school spokesperson says the district has not yet signed a contract with the firm. Now, the Osseo school board did meet Monday night with the firm during a work session. Array and Associates representative told the board that he expects a robust national search to replace McGuire. He also talked to the board about superintendent salaries, which he says tend to run low in Minnesota and the Midwest. Osseo area schools hope to choose a new superintendent by April. 
Well, some of you could see increases in your water bill over the next couple of months. And the Metropolitan Council voted to raise rates for regional wastewater collection. The overall increase is 3.7% in 2018, with some communities paying less, some paying more, depending on the amount of wastewater they put into the system. As Delane Cleveland reports, local cities will pass that cost on to residents and businesses. Construction projects that close lanes are an annoying yet necessary evil. That's especially the case when it comes to the glamorous world of wastewater infrastructure. Every year we invest about $120 million on mostly on rehabilitation. Ned Smith is the Director of Finance and Revenue for the Metropolitan Council. He says that some of the pipes carrying wastewater throughout the Twin Cities are more than 100 years old. And most of our pipes are in pretty good shape, but what we want to do is identify the ones that are in critical shape um, that are rotting or deteriorating and make sure we get out and take care of those first. To pay for those wastewater infrastructure repairs, they've had to raise the rate they charge to local cities. So we have meters all throughout the metro area um, that measure the flow that's coming into a city and out of a city. And then we basically allocate our charges across the cities based on their percent of the flow. In turn, the cities pass that cost on to residents and businesses. This construction project in Fridley is just one example of the infrastructure improvements being made by the Metropolitan Council. Officials say homeowners pay about $23 a month to fund these improvements. It would be on your water bill. Um, it'll probably be broken out as sewer charges and in fact sometimes it's even broken out as Met Council sewer charges. In the eyes of the Met Council, it's a small price to pay for improvements that can help prevent raw sewage leaks into the environment. The other thing that could happen is you'll get a backup which is where the, it's not flowing through the pipes and so it's got to go somewhere so it backs up into people's basements. Um, we're pretty committed to having that happen at a minimum rate. In St. Paul, Delaney Cleveland, CCX News. And we reached out to several local cities to see if they've set their new sewer rates yet, but that won't be decided for several weeks. To see how the sewer rate changes impact your city, you can go to our website at ccxmedia.org. <music> for a busy construction season in Maple Grove, and that tops our look inside City Hall. Maple Grove City Council approved yeah. plans for a 236-unit uh, apartment building I called see, Rush Creek Apartments. They'll be located near County Road 101 and Bass Lake Road. Construction is expected to begin in mid-2018. Future plans on the site call for 86 more apartments and 92 townhomes. Well, Maple Grove also approved a new passport office in a vacant area of the city's government center. Hennepin County stopped processing pass uh, passports four years ago when new restrictions required separating driver's license and passport operations. In 2018, you'll be able to have a passport photo taken and apply for the passport at the Maple Grove Government Center. Well, still ahead, today's school spotlight involves a high school with a non-traditional setting. And plus, the Park Center girls basketball team will have some new faces as they shoot for a return trip to the state. But first, remaining chilly on Wednesday, but a Thanksgiving warm-up is in sight. The traditional high school setting doesn't always work for every student. And the Yasio Area Learning Center offers something different. In this week's School Spotlight, the focus is on how this high school works to get students across the finish line. It's kind of chilly out here. Good morning. Good morning. The start of a new day is a powerful time at Osseo Area Learning Center. Good morning. Can do this? Principal Kristen Hauge and Student Management Specialist Randy Carter. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You ready for this? I think so. Okay. This ritual is symbolic. School staff. All right. Good morning. Literally meet students where they're at each day. Part of what we do every morning, we greet kids at the door. It's a good opportunity to look in a kid's face and see what kind of what kind of day a kid might have. In this and small high school with 200 students, person. building one-on-one -on -one relationships is the number one priority. Kids are just kids, and you know they've had a variety of experiences for whatever reason that have just not allowed them to be successful in the traditional school setting. And so we really just try hard to make sure that we have an individual plan for each kid, and we try and meet them where they're at. The plan right now is to just 
get work done, work my butt off, and get done as soon as possible. 18-year-old <laughs> Olivia Helwig started at Osseo High School, then tried online school, and last year, she came here. It's really a much smaller school, so there is more opportunity for one-on-one -on -one with the teachers, but it really the teachers just show a lot of uh, support for the students is what I've noticed. She got the encouragement she needed, and Olivia's plans now include graduation. I think that I've realized that I can't be a leader if I can't be a leader for myself. And it's finding ways and figuring out ways to motivate the kids, to challenge kids, and to get them to understand that there are so many opportunities out there that they may or may not be able to see right now. You feeling better today, Pri? Oh so much. Yeah. Now back to that morning meeting and what it really means to meet students where they're at each day. Well, here our classroom size range is 10 to 12, so that may be better for them. Smaller class sizes help and new flexible Furniture is another way to engage students in their learning. They can move this around and have more group work type things instead of sitting in a traditional row. Students here may also face a variety of different life situations outside of school. Many students have jobs, some are living with friends, and several students are parents themselves. An on-site daycare ensures their child is safe and being cared for while they take care of their students. Friday, thanks to community partners donating time and resources, small bags of food are given to students for the weekend. At this school, everywhere you look, the message is clear. Keep moving forward. What matters now is that you're right here today. And today we can move forward and do some truly special things. If you buy in, we're going to buy in. Everybody's going to win. Good morning, Matt. Just like the power of that morning ritual, When a student earns enough credits to graduate, the whole school celebrates as the graduate walks the halls in cap and gown. It's the recognition of a success shared. And the kids all come out and the teachers come out and we all ring bells and it's a big fun thing, but it really celebrates that success that's a big milestone for our kids. And graduating students at Osseo Area Learning Center also take part in a more traditional com commencement ceremony as well. Still ahead, the secret to making a good pie crust. But first, the Park Center girls basketball team gets set for the season with a new head coach. John Jacobson is in next. Local girls basketball teams are hard at work preparing for a new season. As Jay Wilcox reports, one of the area's most successful programs will have some new faces on the court and on the bench this season. It's a new beginning for Park Center. Not only did they graduate some very good players, but they have a new head coach. Barb Metcalf, a longtime coach in North Dakota, replaces Chris Vanderheide, who moved on to the college ranks at Gustavus after a highly successful run at Park Center. Um, they've been pretty good. It's like obviously an adjustment, but I think everyone's adjusting pretty well, and it's not that different. Our offense is different, like we've changed our offense a lot in the past, but it's obviously going to change this year with our new coach. Defense is pretty much the same, she's high pressure D, and so we're used to that. I'm excited. Got a real strong core group back, you know, yes we lost some seniors last year, but I'm really trying to instruct the kids to think about the idea that you don't graduate tradition, and I think there's a great tradition at Park Center. The Pirates will have to replace three mainstays of the program who are now playing college basketball. Post player Michaela Hayes and guards Ann Simonette and Danielle Schaub. There's like obviously really big shoes to fill because the seniors last year were really good, but I think we have a lot of good underclassmen to fill the shoes. We have a lot of good younger players that are stepping up right now, and that'll look good because like our program's really young, me and Summer, and Charles, Cheyenne, and Aja are the only seniors, so it'll be good. The younger girls have to step up and fill the roles from last year. Summer Blakemore and Megan Dubois lead the returners, while the Nicken sisters, Charo and Cheyenne, have also played a lot of varsity minutes. Besides the new coach and some new players, the gym at Park Center has been given a facelift. Yeah, it looks really good. Like, they upgraded really, like, a lot, and we love it. It's a good atmosphere to be in. 
The Pirates were consolation champions at the state class 4A tournament last season and have been in the tourney the past four seasons. Coach Metcalf is hoping to build on that while putting her stamp on the program. Coach did a great job for us and coached before him and you know I'm not here to replace anybody. I'm just here to add some new wrinkles, a different little flair. I think if there's anything that uh, I've always been noted for, it's defense. It's a new start, but the Pirates hope to keep up their winning ways. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Former Pirates head coach Patty Sorensen, who preceded Chris Vanderheide in that job, is back as an assistant. Coach Metcalf says the biggest adjustment will be getting used to not having a shot clock in Minnesota, unlike in North Dakota. Park Center opens the season at Eden Prairie next Thursday, November 30th. There was a lot of good local talent in the area this fall in both soccer and volleyball. On this week's Sports Jam show, Jay Wilcox and I name our annual all-area teams in those sports. Here's part of what you'll see. Our forwards include Wyzetta's number eight, Marissa Kalkar. Despite a late-season injury that kept her out of the postseason, Kalkar netted 20 goals and 11 assists this season. The senior was All-Conference, All-State, First Team All-Metro, and a Miss Soccer finalist. Herbert Endele had a fantastic junior season for State Class A champion Tatino Grace. Highly skilled, Endele piled up 34 goals against a mostly double-A schedule, and his presence opened the field for teammates, leading to his 14 assists. Endele earned All-State honors. Armstrong's number 12, Lauren Clark. The junior led the Falcons with 325 kills and has now topped 1,000 in her prep career. Clark was named third team All Metro by the Star Tribune and is committed to Penn State University. Out on top of that ball and knocked it down for a kill. This week on Sports Jam, it airs through Wednesday at 3 30, 6 30, and 9 30 p.m. Next week on Sports Jam, the All Area Football Team. We'll preview this weekend's Turkey Trot Hockey Tournament Wednesday starting at 4 here on CCX News. Mike and Alex, back to you. All right, John, thank you. Up next, one sweet ending. And those pies are so good, they're sold before they're even made. We'll be right back. Well, finally, one very popular pie sale. Now, First Lutheran Church of Crystal holds an annual pie sale to help fund a youth mission trip. Karen Hoganson leads the group making pies, and this year they made 127. Everything from apple, pecan, and pumpkin to French silk pie. We asked Karen her secret to a perfect pie crust. Don't work it too much. The longer you handle it, the tougher it gets. But I have people who've been buying these pies for me for every year, and they come up to me and they're like, do we get pies again this year? You know, they're the best. Are spoken for, so sorry. Better luck next year. The church does take orders about a month beforehand. Proceeds from the pie sale will help pay for a youth mission trip this year, this summer, to Nashville. And as far as the best-selling pie, Karen says that would be French silk pie, no question. Well, I so, wouldn't have think, thought of that for Thanksgiving. You wouldn't have thought of that. That's a favorite for me. Sounds so. good. Yeah. <laughs> that does it for us. Thanks so much for joining us. And we'll see you back here again tomorrow starting at 4.